All right, so um, button on a string. Um, this is a 3D printer, spool on a string, and word to the wise, don't stick your fingers in here like this if you're gonna go any amount of speed, you will lose a finger. So you should put a rod in there. <laughs> Seriously, it'll hurt. I'm telling, I'm telling people how to be safe doing this, okay? And uh, yeah, I'm just being dangerous. So I'm not going very fast, but it's starting to hurt. And now for two spinning spools with cool words. Cool words, yeah. Okay, I've taken the bull roars off. Um, there's nothing scientific about them. They were just simulated based on what I'd seen. Um, they're not very heavy. I think they need a little bit more weight to them. And attaching them with a rubber band is not, pro, uh, you know, according to what a real bull roar would do. But it made the noise. Um, it wasn't, it was a lot of wind resistance. So I've taken them off. I'd like to figure out a way to make them a little more stable and louder without creating more wind resistance. Without the wind resistance, this thing really can get going, but hardly any effort. Um, let's see if I can do this today. It doesn't take too much to wind it up. Just getting them synced is the hard part. And that one's not synced. Okay, here we go. So without the bull roar, very easy to manipulate this. Um, this was actually bending on me. It's not stiff enough top to bottom. I mean, it's a very thin plank. And uh, yeah, so I need to make this thing a little more robust. I have another idea where it's not on a pivot at all and it's just in line, which I think is a, a better design. So I'm gonna do that one and then try to get like I don't know, 10 of these things going all with one input. So let's see, let's get them going fast. And it'll probably break. <laughs> We're going vertical now. Drilling holes in the ceiling upstairs, I came to the dank, dark basement where I stuck a hook up here and a hook on my stairs because I only have two empty 3D printing spools. Um, you would have to keep them in pairs to do this correctly. And this, I really needed a toggle bolt here so I can adjust it. So I just wired it right now for now. It's not the best. Plus nothing really to grab onto because that's where I have to grab onto it. Let me try to put this camera on a uh, tripod so I can show you. It's not too hard. Once this gets going, it really doesn't take any more than... Just getting it going is the hardest part, so... Ow! Once you get one go, get the other one going, get the other one going. And it, it's like lungs. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, I don't have that one right. I don't have anything to grab onto here. But once it's going, it's easy to keep going. And whenever I do it for the camera, I always mess it up. That's because it's been sitting here wobbling for a while. Okay, here we go, come on. It's gonna take for a ton of editing this video. Ow, watch out for all the wires I have sticking out of this thing. Okay, here we go. Alright, there we go. Getting that rhythm. Almost don't even look at it because. It's like lungs. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, let's get going. I am in the plane of rotation, so if anything goes wrong, I'm going to get whacked. It's not that hard to keep going. Wish I had something better to grab onto, though, because this wire kind of. Do it one handed. So, the idea would be to have a whole bunch of them strung on the rafters with one bar in the middle and see how many 3D printer spools I could spin at once. So, I need a whole bunch of 3D printer spools. Donations are welcome. Now, to do this properly, we want both spools to be relatively equal. Um, 
these two spools came from the same manufacturer and they should be roughly the same. But as you can see, there's still some filament on this one, so I need to take this off to use it. Are you watching me? Okay, you like this? This is a very large button on a string, isn't it? Um, this one over here. Can I go on your computer? You want to go on my computer? I'm trying to make videos. Okay. <laughs> this one has a really good whistle on it, and I thought about putting a whistle. I might um, watch. I almost want some of your videos. Okay, go watch my videos. Thank you for watching my videos. You want to subscribe them seven hundred times. My number one fan back there, number yeah. one fan. You hear him? He's gonna subscribe how many hundred thousand times? Uh, seven times. Only okay. one subscribe a day. One subscribe a day for a week. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we got seven new subscribers, and they're all you. Thank you. Okay. So this has a really cool whistle and. It doesn't take much at all. The 3D printed whistle, which I don't know where I put it, um, took a, you had to put your lips on it and really blow hard to get it to whistle. But this one from uh, the Whirly Gig button on string that you can buy, whistles pretty easily. And I thought about putting that on 3D printing some of these and putting them on the edges of this and make this thing really noisy. But I don't like whistles. So I wanted to make it more sound like a uh, bull roar sound. You can see this one works pretty good. Um, it is a little bit unstable when it's slow, but once it gets going, it's pretty good. If I let it go slow, it really slack. It really wobbles like crazy because it's off balance. But we can get it to. Now to put the other one on the other side. And the ropes have got to be just right with the pivot point at the right level for everything to work right. All right, so far we have the one spool over here. Now we just need to drill holes and string this one up with the same length of strings as that one has. Um, I need to restring that one. Those strings are really, that was just testing and they're not even the right, same size. So we're going to do another one and put it on this side. So we have our pivot point and our two spools for this. Let me go ahead and drill the holes. Um, there was only one hole on either side of this already drilled. Um, so you got to mark and make sure that it's perfectly perpendicular to the hole. So we'll drill those holes out. string feed it through the hole okay one variation I am trying is uh, to tie a knot in the center of this and create an hourglass shape um, what that does is when it switches from unwind to wind it doesn't have as much uh, of a snap to it which sends a pulse through there. So um, I'm trying that. Um, it works if you put it on one side and not the other, but you still get, you can feel that snap down there. So if you put it on both sides, it doesn't seem to affect the efficiency of it too much. Um, it does make it shorter. And there's a lot of other variables that have to be taken into consideration. So I'm gonna try that. Um, it does seem to make it a little smoother going from spin to, uh, to rewind. Uh, before I was trying to do this with hooks, so I just looped my strings through there. So it was easy on, easy off. It was a little too easy on and too easy off. Um, and it didn't really always work. So throw that out. I just wire this around here. Twist it up a couple times. And so far it seems to have held okay. I mean, it's just copper wire. So it probably flexes a little bit. Um, but that's all there is to that. Do the same thing at the top and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all together here. I've got close quarters. 